Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is Therapists of Reddit, what was your biggest I know I'm not supposed to judge you but holy sh asterisk t moment. I was counseling a 13 year old girl for anxiety and she reported sexual abuse from her stepdad. I called her mom and told her mother I needed to call child protective services. Turns out that CPS was already aware and the abuse was first report around the patient's age 7. Mom was aware of the abuse and stayed with her husband anyway. It was a complicated situation, and it wasn't. How could she not do more to protect her daughter? Sorry lady. I'm judging. My professor once shared what a patient said that made her quit her job, I didn't rape my daughter, she liked it. The daughter was six. She couldn't take it anymore. She worked in a rehabilitation center for people who have been sentenced for serious crimes and were forced to get mental help. Really difficult job and this pushed her over the edge. I work at a residential group home. We had a kid who we had admitted about four months prior, when in a family session they mentioned they had parasites, I'm like what? Mom goes oh yeah our whole family has them, we don't believe in getting rid of them since they're part of our biological ecosystem. And I'm just dumbstruck, we spent three weeks afterwards convincing this family it was an infectious disease concerns as other residents have fecal eating behaviors and various other unsanitary issues that could cause a unit spread. Three weeks of education, planning, and worse of all convincing this kid and mother that their IQ wouldn't drop because they had agreed to irradiate the parasites. Lots of CBT work, but Jesus it took way longer than any of my team expected. Once had a patient whose wife shook their baby to death. He wanted help reconnecting with his wife. At the time I was a young father of a newborn myself, and he triggered a lot of fear in me for my own child, a deep loathing of his spouse, and pity, the how pathetic kind, for the patient. I tried for three sessions, met his spouse and everything before handing the case over to my supervisor, who knew about my initial reactions, and tried to help me through it. Unfortunately, it ended up being more about my feelings than his, and I was new to the profession at the time. These things are expected to crop up from time to time, but I was still taken aback by my own reactions. I do acute pediatric inpatient behavioral therapy. Has never happened with a child, and never will. Parents on the other hand can be real pieces of shit, and the way they treat slash abuse their children then throw them off on us and scream fix them. I'm a big burly guy and I've cried many nights over this. I work with kiddos who have experienced some kind of abuse slash trauma, 90% of my clients have been sexually abused. I have a lot of holy shit moments but not from judgment of my clients but from what happened to them. I've had clients whose father made them help him dismember mom's body after dad murdered her in front of them. I've had clients under the age of 8 who have been sex trafficked. I've had clients who have been forced to film torture porn. I have holy shit moments all the time. It's not often I get to talk about my profession, but here goes, I was working at a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center and had a client come in who was a self-proclaimed drug lord. As we worked together, he told me about his history. Included in this history was how he got to where he was currently at. During the conversation, this man admitted to selling his sister into sex slavery, forcibly injecting her with several sedatives and narcotics, and having several people teach her a lesson. What this meant, he never shared. He told this story with a blank face, smiling only when he recalled the good times, which he referred to as times when he had enough heroin to get through the day. I'm not sure where he is at now, but this man inspired me to work with victims of sex trafficking, because not only do they deal with the stigma of selling their bodies, they often manage drug addictions. People would honestly be floored if they realized how many people were addicted to chemicals that they were forcibly given. Therapist here. I don't think I've ever judged clients. My job is to understand them and their experiences and help them make the improvements they are ready to make. 
but I have very directly made my thoughts clear about choices, especially choices parents make for slash about their kids. This probably comes off as judgment depending on the client's insecurity about the topic. One example was telling parents of a child I was working with with a severe mood disorder, that had made both suicidal and homicidal threats and attempts, that it did not seem like a good idea to buy the young kid a gun, especially the week after the mother spent the session sharing her fears that the child would murder her. I was once in my psychiatrist's office a bi-monthly, 15 minutes med check. She asked me what was going on more as conversation. I told her that my in the last six weeks, my three elders, aunt and two uncles, I was guardian slash conservator for had died. One right after the other. My wife had a heart attack. My daughter attempted suicide. And my mom broke her hip and had laid on her floor for a week before being found, she drank and ate from the dog's bowls. I got that call within 10 minutes of setting up the last funeral. She stopped the meeting, got on the phone with a the therapist in the office next to her and had her postpone her next meeting to speak with me. I was so fucked up, I had no idea. I think she saved my life. I feel like a lot of the comments saying that they never judge their clients might be working in voluntary services or they've been very fortunate in their client base. Judgment isn't an inherently bad thing. It's how we know that murdering people is wrong. So when a convicted pedophile client told me, nothing gets me going like a pair of little girls worn panties, you better believe I judged the fuck out of him. I continued to work with him and I treated him with compassion and respect because he's a human being worthy of both. I did my job because I'm a professional. But I can't honestly say that I didn't judge him. I judged that he should never be around children. I judged that he is not yet ready for change. I judged that his access to his own daughter should be closely supervised. That's a lot of judgments. Understanding your own inherent biases and how they influence your work is a very important part of training and practice. Lots of people discussing pedophilia as an example of the toughest stuff to not judge despite our training. I haven't yet treated a pedophile thankfully. At least not an identified one. I did run a men's anger management group though, and some of those men had done some terrible things to women. Most of them I found ways to like and admire for their positive aspects, but there were two guys in that group I just could never find unconditional positive regard for. One guy basically never spoke in group. He would give one word answers and occasionally just discuss how unfair the system was to him. I worked really hard to open him up and find things to connect over but he never opened up to me or the group. He left the group after he strangled his girlfriend and went to jail. She survived thankfully. The other left group early routinely, showed up late, participated minimally and similarly never wanted to open up honestly. He left early one group after we had discussed him staying to the end and threatened me when I told him he wasn't going to get credit for attendance. Something the court required. Oddly, I eventually moved into the apartment below him, completely without knowledge, and listened to him scream at his girlfriend and break shit while I called the cops. I judge these men. They're shitty. Maybe they're redeemable, but redemption requires self-exploration and they both refuse to do so. It's worth noting how differently I felt about them than so many others in the group, men I found ways to help and admire and respect even in spite of their awful behavior in the past. Here's my most recent one. As the pandemic worsened here in the US and more lockdowns are on their way, one of my most extroverted clients and I brainstormed ways to meet her social needs while remaining safe. The following week she cancelled her session and told me that she's positive for COVID after attending an orgy, which definitely wasn't one of our ideas. I let out the deepest most defeated sigh after I hung up the phone. I joined in a review of a secluded patient and he threw a cup of wee and POO in my face when we opened the door. I tried to be objective about his experience but I just thought, what a cunt. I work in inpatient services so it can be hard to challenge myself at times, individuals with diagnosis of personality disorder, for example, 
can do things that in isolation make you think they're just being bratty or manipulative. But to think of the experiences that shape them to react like that in a given situation can help to clear my judgment and find compassion. Harder when someone bites me or hits me with one of our fabulously detachable anti-ligature curtain poles, though. I work with youth and adolescents who have anxiety, trauma, and slash or depression. Some of the kids I worked with had some pretty severe attachment issues. Regardless of this, I never thought I'd have to seriously explain. You can't just buy a straight jacket for your kid. Feeding your kid ultra spicy ramen each night instead of the meal everyone else is eating isn't specifically defined as abuse, but you have to understand the emotional abuse that this causes. Your kid isn't trying to kill you because they stand in your doorway at night crying. That's likely because they're scared of their traumatic nightmares, but feel like you will just yell at them if they wake you up. Clinical psychologist working primarily in forensics here. This means my clients are usually involved in legal proceedings, family court, juvenile court, criminal court, etc. My job is usually to evaluate or provide treatment. I'm not there to judge, that's the judge's job, but of course I have my thoughts. I am usually impressed by the justifications people make for shitty behavior. The one that irks me the most is when parents manipulate their child against the other parent. I've had to do therapy for a 5 year who said she doesn't want to see a parent because they haven't paid child support. Excuse me? What 5 year knows, understand, or needs to be worried about child support? Opposite side, if that's accepted too. I was assigned to see the lead psychologist of the local hospital as I was severely depressed and had become suicidal. She literally rolled her eyes at me, told me to grow up and said she could be having appointments with people who were actually about to kill themselves, not me who was already working with the team. This sent me absolutely spinning, bottling everything up, thinking I didn't deserve help and ended up in hospital two years later after an attempt. When they looked at my records the hospital suddenly became very interested in any psychological experts I'd previously spoken to, informed them of the above incident. They asked if I knew the name and I said I didn't, but they had a strong accent, they immediately looked like they were about to burst out crying, apologized excessively then informed me they had been fired a year ago. No idea how many people were affected by that therapist. Not a licensed therapist but a behavioral health technician, basically, means I got a psych degree. I was trained in behavioral intervention techniques for children and was off helping coach parents to support children with behavior disorders. I'll say this, I rarely encountered a child that had a clear mental illness in the same way as when I worked with adults with serious mental illness. In many ways, they were visibly confused or lonely. Given that most of their parents were suffering from poverty, alleviating the burdens of being poor would have likely mitigated the most severe symptoms of many of the children. Advocating for affordable childcare and livable minimum wages is mental health advocacy. I found myself judging, not the children, but their parents. Some parents would drop the kids off with me and peace out with a, fix my kid attitude. As a parent, now, I get some of it, exhaustion and burnout are real. But the best I could do in that situation was provide that kid with an hour-long vision of what it looks like to live in a loving, structured environment. Those kids were the ones I could tell who were much more likely to be subject to the system for the duration of their lives. Either cycles of institutionalization and homelessness or prison. When a concerned parent showed up and asked, how do I help my kid? I practically jumped for joy for the child because they had someone who loved them and was fighting for them. When you as a therapist get to that point, it's time to start thinking of referrals. Be genuine with your client. And then refer out. You have to have unconditional positive regard or you'll never achieve therapeutic rapport. I think for me, the one that comes to mind is a frequent caller to the suicide hotlines. He'd call in and say he's not providing his phone number or name, he would just say that you had 10 seconds to convince him not to kill himself over the phone, or he'd blow his brains out and it'd be your fault. Then he'd count down from 10 to 1 while you're on the phone talking. 
at one, he'd hang up. I'm sure the whole point was to make me feel bad or prove some point, I don't know, I have insufficient information to make an assessment with just that. But I have to admit when I was trying to sleep on days he'd call, especially the first time, I was thinking, fucking asshole better not be dead, fucker. When I was a teenager, I lived in a very emotionally and mentally abusive household. I know people don't take that stuff seriously, but it was so bad that I was later diagnosed with PTSD from a psychiatrist. Anywho, my abusive parents and I got in a verbal fight in the car. My stepdad stopped the car and told me get out we're leaving you on the highway. I wasn't scared because I knew I could just call the police, say I was an abandoned child, and they'd get in loads of trouble, so I said sounds good and got out. My mom then came out and started attacking me. I refused to get back in the car after the attack, so my stepdad got out, dragged me by the hair, called me a bipolar bitch, and threw me in. They made me see a therapist, they told her that I jumped out of a moving car and then I attacked my mom when she was trying to help. This therapist didn't believe anything I said and tried getting me to take bipolar meds. I knew I wasn't bipolar, I was being abused and I knew that the anger and sadness I felt was normal for my situation. She glared at me and said you're not nearly as smart as you think you are. I refused to say a word in any of our therapy sessions after that, I would just go in, sit down, and she'd make snarky sarcastic remarks for a few minutes then dismiss me. She wasn't trying to help me, she was trying to help my parents. I moved out when I was 18, went to college all on my own with no financial help from my family, got a job and left the country to be as far from them as possible. I'm on antidepressants for my PTSD and luckily the therapists I've had since my teenage years have been nothing like that horrible woman, but it still upsets me deeply thinking about it. When I was underage, I got caught with a drink on Bourbon Street and got a minor in possession. I was telling my therapist about it, and said that the police caught me with a hand grenade in New Orleans. He didn't realize that a hand grenade was a type of drink, and it was funny to watch him try to process that his patient might have just casually told him that he had been caught with a fragmentation grenade. He took a big long pause, and said, where did you even find a grenade? I realized the misunderstanding quickly and corrected him. But for a moment he definitely was thinking holy shit how do I deal with this. Well, I quit my last therapist because I made him cry uncontrollably. He tried not to, but he just couldn't hold it back. I felt guilty and won't see him anymore. I think he may have lost a child before. I described watching my aunt grieve over her son's body. I felt so much pain losing him, but was explaining how watching my aunt was dramatically worse. The details about her is what made him lose it. I could tell he was reliving something inside his own head. There was a client a young teenager that was hearing voices to hurt himself. He had multiple crisis calls and was admitted several times to crisis centers for observation until he got prescribed meds and was starting to show improvement. He was starting to disclose that he may have been gay and was stressed out because his father was old school religious and a pillar of the community. The young man was recommended to go to treatment ABS start in a facility to keep him acclimate to he meds and just to give him some coping skills and all that. His father pulled him out AMA and refused to allow him to continue medication. He also discontinued his therapy for a more religious approach. Three months later he completed his suicide. I see that father around and I want to fuck him up. I wish I could. Therapist here. To piggyback on what others have said, it is highly unlikely for me to have moments where I judge my clients. It happens sometimes, but I'm able to shut down those thoughts quickly in my head and return to being present for the people I see. People are so incredibly complex that my judgment wouldn't have any meaning anyway and it doesn't have a place in our work together. I will admit though, something that does get me feeling a little salty is when I have a client's parent that attempts to sabotage the therapeutic relationship I have with their child, 
or pulling them out of therapy entirely when some of the things we talk about challenges some potentially unhealthy family dynamics. I don't feel anger toward the parents, mostly I feel bad for the kid. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.